good. Okay. Um, why Syracuse? Why are you coming to speak at SU? I'm sure you've gotten this question. Well, I, I chose the best uh, college with the best basketball team in the uh, <laughs> in, in the state. Now, it's I was thrilled to be invited to, to speak here at the Maxwell School, which obviously has a, an international reputation, mm -hmm. and uh, I've received many invites uh, around the nation and the state, but to speak here at the Maxwell School is, is a unique privilege, and so it was one I was just honored to, uh, to accept. What do you hope that the SU students are going to come away from your presentation with? Well, I have certain core principles about what government can do, what government should do, that I hope to articulate, and I think that has been the fulcrum of debate over the last few years. We don't often think of it that way, but at a deeper level, I hope they take away a notion of a continued desire to ask hard questions, to be inquisitive about, about both politicians or former politicians' policy, and think about government and the interaction between government and the private sector in a new and creative way. Mm -hmm. um, the focus of the speech, are you going to be more giving your sort of philosophy on what the government should be doing to rescue ourselves from this crisis? Yes, although we'll get to that point in, in, of the uh, pyramid, uh, not indirectly, but what I try to do is ask the question, what should government do in the private sector with respect to the private sector generally? In other words, we've lived through a 30-year period, beginning with the election of President Reagan, when increasingly the presumption was that government interference of any sort was wrong, was antithetical to behavior in the market or to wealth creation. And I think the cataclysm of the last two years has certainly made people question that. For many years, when I was Attorney General, I was trying to craft the argument that you needed a government that participated in a way that was smart, that was thoughtful. And then the question becomes, what are the parameters of that intervention? Where does it make sense for government to act and why? Because what is the philosophical or economic or political reason for government to intervene? Because it can't be either all government is bad or all government is good. There has to be some consensus that emerges about the rationale for government intervention. So what I try to do is propose a logic to it, and by no means suggesting this is it, this is the final product, but at least beginning a conversation that will be an alternative to what, the, what I call the Ayn Rand libertarianism that dominated for the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's been a lot of speculation about Governor Patterson and what he's going to do in the next election. Um, what do you think about his position in New York State government? Well, David has been handed a very tough hand. And any governor who has seen revenues drop by 20% has seen the demand for health care spending increase, the demand for education spending increase, is in a bind. And that is true whether it's Arnold Schwarzenegger in California or Deval Patrick in Massachusetts, both very good uh, governors. And so David Patterson is not unique in facing a, a political, uh, politically difficult uh, landscape. Having said that, I think he needs to continue to work with the legislature. It's been a combative relationship recently. It was combative on certain issues when I was there as well. And I think it's combative between President Obama and, and, and the Congress. And so this is not, again, unusual, but you continue to work at it. You need to be persistent, stick with your principles, but also see if you can find points of agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and yourself, what have you been doing since leaving office? I read an article in the Post Standard today that you're writing a lot and right. speaking. Uh, right. What's it been like well, for Most you? of the time has been working in a family business. We have, uh, my, my dad built a business that was uh, uh, you know, quite successful and I'm thrilled that I've been able to contribute, uh, I hope, over the past uh, couple years there. Writing is something I love to do and it's a way to contribute to, in a small way, to the political discourse. I write for Slate. Uh, I teach at CCNY, the City College of New York, part of the CUNY system, which I love. It's, uh, uh, the only one class, it's one afternoon every week, but it is, um, I would say, probably the highlight of, of the week because it is fun trying to uh, teach and encourage difficult, inquisitive thought, and it's a fun syllabus, and it's, uh, so I've enjoyed that. And what advice would you have to Syracuse students who kind of want to do the same thing that you've done, pursued the same sort of um, reforms that you have? I, I would say as, as with every career, find something you're passionate about because so much of your life revolves around what you do at the office, your work, um, even your home life revolves around it. Find employment that you're passionate about because it will make life more interesting. Mm -hmm.